Hello folks, so if you saw me testing out my new telescope setup last week for solar imaging, you might have heard me complaining that rats, I have dust specks on my camera sensor. And I thought, well, I don't want the specks to show up on my final images of the sun. So what I can do is either clean off my camera sensor really good or start capturing flats to take out the dust specks in post-processing. So what I did is I decided to do both because I want to know how to do flats for the future. And I'm glad I did test out the flats, even though my camera sensor seems pretty clean, as you can see here on the right with this short video of the sun. Um, flats um, fix a, a lot of other issues I wasn't aware of, you know, and I wish I had known this last year. So I'm going to be doing flats every time I image the sun now. And it's no big deal. They are super easy to do, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So the sun was out a few days ago. It was really hazy, so this isn't a great video to work with here on the right, but I recorded this short video in SharpCap, and after I recorded this video, I thought, okay, now I'm going to try and re um, capture flats, and I'm going to follow Jason's advice on what he told me earlier was, if you're doing flats, all you have to do is blur out the sun and, and capture your flats. Okay, so I thought, well... I got that one sentence to work with. Let's see if I if I can <laughs> figure out the rest of it. So what I did is, um, you can see here, I've got the rim of the sun. Yeah, I didn't want that rim showing up in my flash. So what I did is I pointed my telescope closer to the center. And here's the short video I did of the sun. And I blurred out the sun just enough so that none of the, the texture of the sun was showing. Um, now you can see sort of Newton's rings showing up. And Newton's rings are usually an, an issue you, you get with um, um, uh, solar imaging. So I, now I can see that. That's good. I want that. And I can see a few tiny blemishes. Um, probably with some specs I have in the imaging train somewhere. But that's good. I think, I think this is about enough of blurring it out. So I thought, well, okay, I, I've, I've got that. Now where do I go from here? And SharpCap actually has a feature to let you create flat masters and I thought great well that should be easy as I clicked on it and it was a pay feature oh rats so all right I'm going to try and figure this out another way so what I did is I just I set sharp cap equal to 100 I mean I set it to capture 100 frames and then stop so I'll have a video of a blurred out sun that's going to be what I'm going to use that as my flat master and then from there, I, I, I didn't know what to do, so I went into Cloudy Nights, and I was surprised at, at how easy it was. So uh, let's, let's, let's take over from there. Okay, so now I am in Auto Stacker, and I want to create my Flat Master. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that video I did of the Blurred Out Sun that was um, around 100 frames worth. So I'm going to go into... The folder here, let's see, sharp cab, it was from 3 1. And this last one, this is my my blurred out sun. That's what I'm going to use to create my flat master. And according to Cloudy Nights, all I had to do, make sure it's on surface. And I go into image calibration, and I'm going to say create master frame. Um, it says, uses master dark if loaded. That kind of confused me a little because I, I'm creating a flat, not a dark, but you can use this for flats. Um, so I'm going to click that. It's going to ask me to create, uh, give it a file name. I'll call it flat master. I'll call it that. Da, ti da, ti da. I don't know what's going on here, though. Is it using the entire video to create the master flat? I don't know. But it worked. <laughs> That's all you need to know. This is, this is what worked for me. Okay, it's done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that video file. And I just, I think it was this last one here. And I'm going to say image calibration, load master flat. 
and there's a flat master we just created and you'll see now it says right here flat so now I'm gonna actually stack my Sun image I'm gonna click analyze well you saw me click analyze first here have any good jokes to tell while we're waiting for this. Hurry up already. Okay, so the analyze is done. So I've got to set to 30, but that video was so short of the sun. I should have gone, I should have probably set it for 200 frames. I set it for, sometimes in SharpCap, if you set something for 10 seconds, it seems like it records a three second file. I, I, I'm not going to set it for seconds anymore. I'm going to set it according to frames. But I'm going to, I'm just say, um, keep, since it's such a short video, I'm going to say keep 75% of the frames. I need some data. And let's see. Uh, I'll see that at 56, and I'll say place a P grid, and I'm going to hit stack. So what I'm going to do is, we saw how I, I loaded the flats for this video. I'm going to do one with flats and another without flats, because I want you to see the difference and, and why it's a good idea to create flats. So I'll be back when all this is done. Okay, so I am in Pixinsight, and here is one version of that sun image that I stacked, and here's another version. And this, the one on the left is with flats, and the one on the right is without the flats. And right off the bat, it they look very, very close to the same because uh, I did a really good job cleaning off that sensor. The sensor, by the way, Nothing was stuck to it, so it was easy to clean. I just unscrewed it. Uh, I unscrewed the top of the ASI-183 and just had a little squeezy air thing. I just blew some air on it, got the dust off of it, and screwed it back on. I didn't have to touch the sensor, so it, it wasn't a critical operation there. So I'm thinking, well, maybe I didn't need flats, but now watch. Uh, the problem with the sun images start to surface the deeper you go into processing. Now, for example, the first issue is, um, let's see, look what happens. Uh, now, if your texture is kind of weak like mine is, it was a hazy day, sometimes I, I see people, they will actually invert the sun to, to, to make the texture pop out. And normally, um, you would create a mask to, to protect this area from the inversion. But I'm not going to do that here. That's simple. We all know how to create masks by now. But watch, watch what happens here if I invert it. Okay, that's that. I just inverted the one with no flats, and now let me invert the one with flats. And let's make it a little brighter so you can see. Like I said, right off the bat, it, it doesn't look like um, uh, you, you really needed the flats. But let's just see. You right. I, I think you can see. Let's do that one. And right away, once you start working on the sun, you see what the inversion did. It makes that texture pop. The only problem is when you do that invert on the sun. It looks cool like this, but if you have a sunspot, it's going to turn your sunspot black from black to white. That's why I don't really like to to use the invert, but it. it it does really make it pop. So look at right off the bat. Look at I've got a diagonal here. Um, and I was seeing this a lot last year. With the higher resolution I choose, sometimes I would even see two diagonals. And you don't really, I don't know how well you can see this in the video, but there's definitely a diagonal going on there, and there's nothing going on with the, with the one that has flats. And just look at the overall illumination. It looks a lot more even on the left 
And the one with no flash, look, I've got a dark patch here, a dark patch here. And, I mean, that's okay if the sun was really um, like that. But if, if you saw the original video, um, it, it didn't really appear that way. So, um, and what else? Now, that's one thing that the, the, the flats fixed. It, it evened out the illumination. And let me show you something else here. And this is a restoration filter. Sometimes you can use this for, for sharpening this. So let me take this down to 65. I'm going to jack this up. Two is probably a good value, but I'm going to jack it up to three, 350. And I'm going to, I'm going to over sharpen it just so you can see deeper the issues with the one with no flats. I'm going to execute that there. And I'm going to execute that. So look at as I get closer. I don't know how well you can see this, but there's nothing here. But look at I'll, try, I'll zoom in. You see that there's a screen door effect going on here that's not in the one on the left. The the flats actually cleaned up. I mean, you can see other issues from over over sharpening on the one on the left, but you don't see that weird grid on the left. Um, and I I was seeing this last year, and Doug was seeing this in his images of the sun last year and I know Jason even called it the screen door effect. <laughs> I thought that was a fitting name for it. But I didn't know the flask could have fixed it last year. So all last year I, I was kind of dealing with this weird issue. But uh, that's another reason why you'd want to use flats to get rid of that. So anyway, uh, so you just saw if I had dust specs, the, the flask would have fixed the dust specs. It, it evens out the illumination, and it gets rid of this weird screen door effect um, that that you have. And if you have Newton's rings showing up in your image, I didn't really seem to have it on mine, but a lot of people might have Newton's rings. The flats will fix those Newton's rings for you. That's just something to keep in mind when you're doing um, flats. So, and so that's just it's it's a good reason to use flats. And I want to show you here. Uh, I was out uh, on, on a, a couple of days after this, and I wanted to capture this sunspot, you know. Okay, there's not a lot of activity going on with the sun at the moment, but I wanted to show you just a, a, a quick way to process the sun. This is just a quick, uh, if you really want to do a grade, I mean, but you can use Photoshop. There's lots of other videos, and I've used Photoshop too, but I just want to show you how quickly you can get something out of this. So... This is the original stack. I've already cropped it, but I haven't done any other processing. And you can see there's my there's my little uh, sunspot there. But let me show you. Let's just run a quick sharpen on there. I'm going to bring this down to 65. I'll leave that at two. It doesn't do much, but you can see it did. It, I don't know how well you can see this, but before and after, it did do something there. And I was using, for this one, by the way, I was using my wide field scope. I had issues with that new telescope that day finding focus because I got to work on that because uh, and I, I don't know how, I just need to find the right spot, how much tension to apply to the draw tube so that it's, it's secure enough so it won't move back and forth, but it's loose enough so that the autofocus can move it. So I... And right now the boat, the draw tube was slipping on me. I I didn't want to deal with it that day. So, so we've done a little sharpening on this. And instead of invert, there's another thing you can do here. Uh, let's try. Uh, this is kind of a neat trick to make the the texture pop. I'll take HDMI multi scale transform. I don't know if anybody else does this. I just try different things. And let's drag it over. See if it makes the texture pop a little bit. That was kind of cool, seeing some more. So, see, as opposed to uh, the invert, the HDMR, the HDMR uh, makes the texture pop, and you still keep your sunspot black. So that's why I liked it. And right now, it's 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 a grayscale image. Let's convert this to an RGB. Now let's uh, let's see. Should we make it a little, a little darker, maybe? No. Uh, you can play around with that. Here, let's give it some color. Let's boost the red up. Pull the green down. 
And you can keep, you know, tweaking these until you get a nice orange-yellow kind of sun. Mm, that's maybe not the perfect color, but you just keep playing around with this. Oh, that's a little more yellow. I kind of like that. Let's, or should I mess with the darkness a little bit? Yeah, anyway, like that. Hey, now I've got something that looks a little more sun colored. I've got my sunspot, and I can even see a little bit of a white flare going on here. That's a good, that's a good color for the, the flare. And uh, if you were using that invert, flares would come out black. You don't want black flares. So anyway, that, that's how you can do a, a quick process on the sun. Uh, and uh, But maybe, it's not a masterpiece, but I... With the wide field scope, I can't get in close enough to really see some sharp details. So, uh, but I think it's kind of cool. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. And, oh, one more thing. Let me show you. It, nebula season is pretty much coming to an end. But there's one last thing I'm trying to capture. Should I show you or not? No, no, no. I'll, uh, I'll surprise you with it later. So, for, in another video. Okay, I'll see you guys later.